Yeah. Well, cool, man. Well, it's great to meet you. Thank you for taking a minute out today. Sure. Yeah. I'd love to take part. Uh, yeah. Where do we take it from here, I guess? I, I, we, uh, we're going to start with, before we get into your life as a profitability and growth advisor, I want to begin with four years ago, we were wrapping our heads around this pandemic. What, how long was it going to last? How was it going to affect all of us? Now that we're kind of in that quote unquote post pandemic era, how did you survive it and how did it ultimately change you? Okay. Perfect. Yeah. 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 Do you want to just jump into that now? Yeah. I was, that, that was going to be my lead in question into your career and getting into how you got to where you're at now. But I like to begin there because that was kind of the, that's been the proverbial elephant in the room, so to speak. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think the biggest thing was we really just had to pivot. You know, a lot of the folks I think in COVID who, didn't make it through were the folks who got locked into their old plan and didn't realize that they had to change. And, you know, everyone, everyone had to change and, and pivot with what was different. So especially in the business world, you know, socially uh, as a, as a country, as a world, I guess, in a way. And when we were doing our work with our clients, one of the things that was coming up a lot was budgets were no longer relevant business plans were no longer relevant. Financing was not what it was like, you know, and, you know, people had to lay people off. Some people had to hire people. I mean, it was just like, you know, everyone kept saying it, but it was the new normal and you had to get used to that new normal. Otherwise you were going to be stuck in a past that was long gone. So absolutely. Well, yeah. I would imagine in your line of work, your client base probably grew quite a bit. You probably saw a, a, a rise. Yeah, what we do is commonly considered a recession proof industry because yeah. when people are sort of feeling the burn, they need more help to yeah. understand how to navigate it and how to make plans that help them move forward. So, yeah, it it people were feeling a lot more stress and, you know, definitely working with entrepreneurs, there's a tendency for them to feel like they're the Swiss army knife and they can solve every problem on their own, which is often a challenge they have to work through. Yeah. And so we found ourselves sort of coming to their aid more often than we might have otherwise, because they were realizing, hey, I, I don't think I can do this on my own. I need help. So, so speaking of what you do on a daily basis, I'm going to put you in front of a bunch of third graders at career day. One yeah. of the kids curiously looks up and says, hey, what do you do for a living? How do you answer that child? Uh, we tell the child we help the business owner know what to do today so that they can do what they need to do tomorrow. So what did you want to be in the third grade? What did I want to be in the third? Oh man, <laughs> shoot, that's taking me back. Uh, you know, truly, I I wanted to be an actor when I was okay. a kid. Yeah, okay. that was a big dream of mine, and I actually pursued it for quite some time, but uh, got involved in business, and that sort of I sort of caught the the bug from that. So, okay, well then let's go back to your childhood. Talk to me a little bit about how you got to where you're at today in the business world, and how this acting bug and all of these seeds grew into who you are today? Oh man, long trip. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, sure. So when I was young, like, uh, you know, fourth grade actually was my first performance. So that was where I really, I, I guess I could probably say before fourth grade, I wanted to be Michael Jackson. Um, yeah. I was a huge Michael Jackson fan when I was a kid, yeah. but anyway, so, uh, yeah, fourth grade was my first performance and just built on that, like in school over and over and over. And eventually when I got out of, you know, public school, after doing a lot of different things, a lot of singing, dancing and acting uh, performances, I got involved in a college. I toured a, a show, you know, through uh, New York and Colorado, um, did some auditioning in New York and LA and all that type of stuff. But once I got into college, one of the things that I saw all of my peers struggling with was their acting career sort of stopped when they ran out of money, you know, yeah. and they, they did not really have, you know, I was, I was criticized for having a backup plan, but I was trying to sort of do a, a parallel plan yeah. of, of, of having a career while, you know, having a high value skill set while doing the acting thing, because I thought, you know, waiting tables is going to get old. And so you know, there's no business like show business. So I actually got two degrees, one in accounting and one in acting. 
And so everywhere I went, I sure looked like I didn't fit in, but I did my best yeah. and, uh, and got through it actually pretty well. But in college, I got involved. <laughs> this is another sort of tangent. I got involved in martial arts and that, that superseded everything I was doing in acting. It really was something that drove me in a different, a whole different way. And I did that for about 20 years. Uh, I still do that on my own uh, yeah. privately. But uh, yeah, then then I just sort of became, you know, an accountant to pay the bills uh, yeah. instead of instead of an accountant, to, an accountant to pay the martial arts bills instead <laughs> of an accountant to pay the acting bills, I guess. is sort of yeah. like so. so let me ask you this. Who's been a hero or an inspiration in your life? Yeah, um, honestly, lately, the person who inspires me the most is William Edwards Deming. And I appreciate the opportunity to talk about him anytime. Most of the yeah. folks around me get tired of hearing it. But uh, William Edwards Deming is the guy, one of the guys they credit with what they call the Japanese economic miracle. And so this is where the country of Japan after World War II went from being a pretty, pretty bombed out, you know, Stone Age uh, area. Uh, to being the third largest economic superpower in 20, 30 years. And they credit William Edwards Deming largely uh, for being responsible for that. He went over to Japan. Uh, basically, he was sent there to conduct a census. You might say he got the short end of the stick. Uh, he was sort of laughed out of American business rooms. But when he went to Japan, his ideas caught on like wildfire. And they loved the way he presented things and the way he navigated some of the challenges they were facing and they revolutionized the whole country. And they, wow. that's, that's why Japan is what it is today is because they essentially got a boost from someone who really uh, thought, thought differently about business in a much more holistic and compassionate way. So if you can meet anybody alive on the planet right now, whether it's in business or otherwise that you admire or find fascinating, who would it be? Anyone on the planet right now? Oh yeah. man. Um, <laughs> Honestly, I'd say right now, Elon Musk is really rising yeah. to the top of the list. I admire his determination. I admire his often misunderstood willingness to save humanity, <laughs> um, you know, because there's so many, you know, what he's doing, it just seems so non-political, yeah. sort of non-biased, sort of like independently formed idea. I mean, it. it yeah, I think it's discounted what we experience where if the world does have a mega billionaire and they've got all resources available to them, that they actually use those for the good of the world at large. And in a, in a, a I think, an extremely sacrificial, self-sacrificing way. So I, I'd love to meet him. That'd be amazing. I think we're too close to him now. I think we're too close to all of it to realize the magnitude of what he's doing. Yeah, it's sort of like uh, being right in front of a door and not knowing how to get through. Yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, it, it's just losing the forest for the trees or whatever the analogy is. Like, and they they say great people often aren't appreciated in their time. Yeah, you know, Van Gogh was sort of laughed at, and Edison uh -huh. before he finally made his discovery, everyone thought he was crazy as hell. You know, so yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it's yeah, it's it's sort of tough being so close to it because we don't sort of see the sweeping impact that these people can have. Yeah. So you get it. You, you have the chance to give good advice to clients. What's the best advice you've ever gotten? Uh, the best advice I've ever gotten. Yeah. Uh, to take advice from others, <laughs> probably, you know, like it's so easy to just sort of get stuck in our own heads and think we have to work everything out on our own. And that doesn't mean you let everyone sort of dictate how you should approach things or, what you need to do next or whatever. Like it's not necessarily the case, but you have to be open to new ideas. You have to let people who've been further down the trail tell you where the potholes are and all those types of things. And so the biggest advice, I guess, is to to follow advice. If, I hope that's not a deflection of the question, but- No, it's not. Uh, you know, I, I think that's big. You, you really do have to be open to other ideas and you have to put the burden on yourself of separating the wheat from the chaff you know, most people avoid that because so they think on their own and they kind of get locked in their own ideas, which always has bias. Um, but you have to be open to outside ideas, be willing to take the time to separate the wheat from the chaff, find the good from the bad, and use those resources that are available to you for people who've already done 
what you're trying to do. You know, otherwise Absolutely. so much gets wasted along the way. I agree. So of all of the things that you've done and evolved into in your life, what are you the proudest of? What am I the proudest of? I'm proudest of my personal relationship. Uh, my partner, Ashley, we've been together for 14 years and it, we really have an incredible connection. And we've uh, weathered the storm through some very, very difficult times. And a lot of folks, you know, I, I, I certainly feel for them, but I know a lot of folks can't say that, you know, they something went off along the way or they made some bad choices or, you know, who knows who's to blame or whatever, but it didn't last and it wasn't what they hoped it would be. And for me, I think we've really got something great going on personally in that relationship, my relationship, our relationship. And so that's what I'm most proudest of. It's something that I can relish and appreciate and gives me a huge sense of gratitude every day. So James, at the end of the day, everyone has a perception of you, family, friends, clients, but you run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? Who do I think I am? I think I'm a scrapper, you know, honestly, like <laughs> I've, I've, I've walked down the entrepreneurial journey quite a while. I've done the acting thing. I've done the martial arts thing. You know, I've, I've, I, I guess I'm willing to start new things and I'm willing to kind of take the hits as you work through it to get where you want to go. So that's probably the thing about me that a lot of people don't necessarily see right off because most people see you as you are at that moment and they don't always know or see the history. And so, yeah, I've been, been around for a bit, I guess now. And, uh, you know, I haven't gotten knocked off the board yet. So, <laughs> so if someone comes up to you, they write a script about your life. Who's the actor that's going to play you? Oh, jeez, Joe, <laughs> you've got these killer questions. <laughs> who's the actor who's going to play me? Oh, geez. Now, I, you know, man, I would, I would, it would be such a privilege to have Gary Oldman play me. Yeah. But, you know, I saw this crazy thing the other day, like uh, the, uh, the biggest, the biggest shock from, for someone could be that they're walking through the grocery store doing something that's totally normal and they hear cut and it turns out they were actually Gary Oldman this whole time because he's just that <laughs> good of an actor. You know, <laughs> I thought yeah. that's the most hilarious thing, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. He, I think I've always admired him. Um, and I think in some ways, uh, you know, uh, he could probably look like anyone, but we're, we're probably a, a, an okay, close enough. Yeah. Person, yeah. Gary would fetch a trophy for that for sure. Yeah. I, I hope so. Yeah. I hope yeah. it'd be an interesting story for somebody. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so if anyone wants to hire you, reach out, learn more about what you're doing, any of the good business, where can they go? The best place to find us is on our website. It's cacadvisors.com. So advisors with an O. And uh, we've got a lot of resources on there. You can also find us, CAC Advisors on YouTube. You can find me, James Childress, on LinkedIn. We'd love to talk to anybody about any challenges they're facing and love to see if there's some way to can help. Excellent. James, this has been wonderful. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your story. Keep building the dream, man. Thanks, Joe. Thank, Thank you, James. Keep it up. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>